There are two questions I get asked the most about Scotland when I'm overseas. The first question I get asked is about Scotland being within the UK and how a country can be within a country. The second question I get asked a lot is about the changing daylight hours. The first question is a bit of a complicated one, so maybe I'll tackle that in a future video. But today I'm going to be sharing with you more about the changing daylight hours here in Scotland. Today is called winter solstice. Winter solstice occurs in the Northern Hemisphere in December every year, and it's also known as the shortest day of the year or the longest night of the year. Overnight tonight, we will have the longest period of darkness. The sun is due to set here in Southern Scotland tonight at 3.47 p.m. and rise tomorrow morning at 8.38 a.m. So tonight we will have 16 hours and 51 minutes of darkness. After today, the sunset and the sun rises will adjust by a minute or so every single day until the summer solstice, which will be in June next year. To compare to the summer solstice, which is in June, the sun will set at 10.06 p.m. and the sun will rise at 4.29 a.m. That means there'll only be around six hours and 23 minutes of darkness. We only have around seven and a half hours of daylight today, so I'm going to make the most of the day and enjoy a trip in my van before heading to somewhere which is really important for winter solstice. Today I'm going to be exploring a small corner of southern Scotland. My first stop is a farm shop that I've heard a lot about and there's lots of organic and local produce sold here. It is so windy today, it's crazy, really really windy and rainy. Hopefully I don't get blown away. Let's head into the farm shop. Loch Arthur Farm Shop is located in Beeswing in southern Scotland. It's associated with the Loch Arthur Camp Hill community, which is a social enterprise and community that provides support and a home for individuals with learning disabilities. The farm shop creates meaningful employment opportunities for its residents. Wow, the Loch Arthur farm shop is incredible. It's so much bigger than I expected and there is so much to choose from inside. So many freshly baked goods, cheeses, meats, amazing ranges of different organic products and there's also an incredible cafe in there. I really wanted to have something but I bought a few things including things that I'm going to be giving as Christmas gifts and I'll show you what I got inside. Quite a few local products. These are the local beers from the area from Solway Breweries. So I got the Solway Mist and the Criffle. Here at Loch Arthur they make quite a few things on site. Uh, so I got this Loch Arthur chutney, squash apple. I got this incredible looking focaccia that they make on site as well. I'll have that later on. I got these bags of Galloway pasta. I've always wanted to try this Galloway pasta and it's, it's available here so I got two packets and I'll give these as Christmas gifts. So got some cheese so they make this cheese here at Loch Arthur and then this is one called Cairnsmore cheese and that's made nearby as well so I'll try these later on. They also do so many different organic vegetables so I got a few tomatoes and some kale which I'll have for my dinner later. Around a 10 minute drive from Loch Arthur is the small village of New Abbey and I've just driven here now and I want to see something called Sweetheart Abbey which is a very large structure and it's just outside the window here but it's absolutely pouring with rain so I'm going to wait a little bit until the rain stops and just as I parked up I noticed there was a leak coming in through the back door, which I'm a bit worried about. It's dripping in and there's quite a lot of water that has collected on the floor of the van. I've never seen a leak before in the van. I'm thinking maybe I didn't slam the back door shut properly and that's why a small leak has happened and hopefully that is the case. So last week I put these inside the van. These are dehumidifiers that usually you would hang in the wardrobe and look how much water I already managed to collect in a week. It's really worth having these. I've got one on either side. There's another one here as well and there's also quite a bit of water in here. While I'm waiting for the rain to stop, I'll tell you a little bit more about the pros and cons of the very different daylight hours between the winter and the summer. So I know some of you might live in places where there's not much change in the sunrise and the sunset times throughout the year. Having such a long time of darkness in the winter months has both positive and negative sides to it. So I'll share some of those with you while we're waiting for the rain to stop. The first obvious difference is that with the reduced daylight, there's less time to do activities 
activities outdoors. So if you want to do things like hiking, there is a much shorter window to do those activities. Some of you might have heard before of SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. This basically is when there's reduced daylight, it can impact somebody and it makes them have mood changes, makes them feel more lethargic and also they can sometimes feel quite negative too. Another con is that when people are usually traveling to school or work around between 9 and 5 p.m. it's usually dark. Because of the reduced visibility there can be a higher chance of accidents. In the winter you also have to have the lights on for longer since it's dark for such a long period so the cost of bills are usually more during the winter months. Another con can be a reduction in vitamin D due to the reduced daylight hours and vitamin D is an essential vitamin that we all need and it's actually recommended in places where there's long hours of darkness that people take a vitamin D supplement or something to make up for that. For me personally I feel a bit more lethargic and I sleep much longer in the winter months. I find it much harder to wake up when it's dark outside compared to in the summer months when I wake up and the sun is already up. In the winter sports do continue like football and tennis and rugby. There's usually floodlights on the pitches so even if it's dark training can still continue. Of course when there's cons there's also some pros as well so a few things that I like about the winter months when it's darker. A lot of places where you go they will have a log burning stove and really nice lighting it feels really cozy and homely in the winter which I really like. There's also much better stargazing opportunities in the winter months because you have 16 or so hours of darkness there's a much higher chance that you'll have a, a clear sky and you can see amazing stars and also the northern lights. In Scotland it's possible to see the northern lights and it's even possible in southern Scotland sometimes to see the northern lights so you have a much higher chance in the winter months. I also feel in the winter months there's a lot of community tea and cultural events in Scotland which is really nice. So there'll be Christmas markets and I also notice where I live a lot more clubs tend to gather and then they only run in the winter months. I hope that's given you a bit of insight into some of the pros and cons of these darker evenings. It looks like it stopped raining so let's go and check out Sweetheart Abbey. Sweetheart Abbey was established in 1273 by Lady Devorgilla of Galloway as a tribute to her husband John Balliol. After he died, she carried his embalmed heart in an ivory casket. The abbey became a significant place in medieval Scotland. However, during the 16th century Scottish Reformation, a time of major religious and political changes, the abbey suffered damage, leading to its current ruined state. So behind me here is Sweetheart Abbey, such an impressive structure and I can't believe it's over 750 years old. The detailing in this section is unbelievable. Sweetheart Abbey is currently closed today. I've seen so many structures in Scotland this year that are getting the construction work and the, the work done on them to make them safe, which is it's really good that money's being invested into maintaining these old buildings because they're so impressive. New Abbey Corn Mill is a water-powered mill which was built in the 18th century. Today it's a historic site that you can visit and you can explore the mill to see how it used to work. I decided to come inside the corn mill, it's £3.80 to enter and you see a wonderful video that explains everything about the history and inside it's still set up like it was when it was built in the late 1700s which is incredible. In the video it mentioned that they did a lot of milling of oats here so many people in the village at that time would be having oats as part of their diet, they made porridge, oat cakes and they also used oatmeal for baking as well. This is fantastic, what an interesting place. There's one more flight of stairs here. Oh wow! I ended up spending quite a long time in New Abbey. I was waiting for the rain to stop and then at the corn mill, I was there for ages. I was the only person visiting and the lady took a lot of time to explain everything to me. So that was really nice. Really recommend going there. I didn't even know about the corn mill and it's part of historic Scotland. 
On my way to my next stop, I made a pit stop here at the trailhead for Criffel, which is a really great hike in southern Scotland. I've done it before and it probably takes about two or three hours to do the whole hike and there's a new path that's been put in recently, but I don't think I'll have time today. It's actually almost two o'clock. So we only have around an hour and 50 minutes left of daylight. So I don't want to set off on a hike at the moment because it'll be dark by the time I get back. But I'll show you what the trailhead here looks like and you can see the height of the hill. If you like hill walking, this could be a nice thing to do in the area. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. AG1 is a blend of over 70 high quality ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, all packed into one scoop. I travel around in my van a lot, and although I try to take good care of my diet, it's sometimes difficult. So it's great that AG1 supports my whole body health and nutrient needs. Drinking AG1 is now part of my daily routine and it's so quick and effortless to make. I just add one scoop into the shaker and it's ready in seconds. To be honest, before trying AG1, I wasn't sure if I'd like the taste and thought it might taste like blended up vegetables. However, it actually tastes really great. It's a little bit like pineapple and vanilla and I love it. I've been drinking AG1 every morning for around three months now and I found myself with improved focus and energy and I don't tend to get that crash and burn effect that I usually get with coffee. AG1 also supports things like energy levels, immune health and stress. If you'd like to try AG1 you can check out my link below. If you use my link you'll get a shaker, you'll get this jar, you'll also get five travel packs and you'll get a year's supply of D3 and K2 with your first purchase of AG1. I've seen some comments on previous videos from people saying that they're in the US Navy or they have been part of the US Navy previously and I've come to a spot which might be of interest to some of you. So this place behind me is the birthplace of John Paul Jones who's known as the father of the US Navy. It said online that this museum is open today but I just arrived and it's not and it says that it's only open between April to September but we can still go around and have a little look at the house, at the cottage where he was born. In the window there I can see a boat and some American flags. This is the cottage here, it's really cute. John Paul Jones was born here on July 6th, 1747 and was a Scottish American naval officer and a founding father of the United States Navy. He is best known for his naval victories during the American Revolutionary War. John Paul Jones is often referred to as the father of the American Navy for his significant contributions to establishing and strengthening the naval forces of the newly formed United States. It's possible to have a little look inside the windows and it's all set up with old furniture and probably a replica of what it would have looked like at the time when he lived there quite interesting to see. It's so fantastic to see more and more places introducing these air style accommodations for campervans. These alternative motorhome stopovers are a great option because sometimes you don't need all the full amenities that are at a campsite and they can be quite expensive especially if you're traveling on your own like I am. Sometimes they can be 30, 35 pounds a night to stay whereas these smaller motorhome airs can vary between 10 pounds to 20 pounds per night which is much more affordable which is great so yeah everyone that set these up really appreciate it thank you so much just near the john paul jones house is this lovely beach i mean it's the middle of december so it's probably not what most of you imagine a beach to look like but it's very nice and you can see extremely clearly over to england just over there i don't know how clearly you can see it on the camera one incredible thing about this beach is the amount of seaweed earlier this year i did a foraging course here in the south of scotland okay this is the one i'm going to try oh my hair went in the mouth as well mm. That one doesn't have much flavour. Not very salty either. The really great thing about seaweed 
is the health benefits that it has because a lot of the seaweeds have superfood properties and things like that so it can be really good for your health. So the reason I came down here was because many of you had left comments recommending me to visit a certain place. We have only around an hour and 30 minutes left of daylight. I can see the sun starting to go down. So I'm going to head to the final spot and then park up for the night and then it's going to be the longest night of the year. The place many of you suggested me to come and see is Southerness Lighthouse. When I was on Isla, I found a square lighthouse. I think it was called Caragfada. However, many of you commented that there's also a square lighthouse here at Southerness. So I'm really interested to see it. I'm just going to walk there now. So I've just arrived here at the lighthouse. Wow, so impressive. It looks really old compared to some of the other lighthouses that I've seen previously in other parts of Scotland. Southerness Lighthouse was first lit in 1749 and is one of Scotland's oldest lighthouses still in operation. The lighthouse was designed by the Scottish engineer Robert Stevenson and serves as a navigational aid for ships entering the Solway Firth. Originally the lighthouse used oil lamps and reflectors but it has been modernised over the years and today it's automated and its light is powered electrically. While I was at Southerness, the rain came on and I got absolutely soaked. I ran back to the van and then drove to the place I'm planning to spend the night, which is near Dumfries. It's really rainy and windy out there and it's currently 3.48 p.m., which is the sunset time. So from this moment onwards, we're going to lose the daylight and we're going to be entering the longest night of the year. I'm going to get into the back of the van, turn the heater on, put the lights on and make it really nice and cosy. Out there it's also really cloudy so it's very unlikely that we'll be able to see any stars tonight unfortunately. Dinner is ready. So we have here at the front kale with some lemon, salt, pepper, olive oil, some fresh tomatoes that I got earlier at Loch Arthur. The lemon was from Loch Arthur's. Actually, everything was from Loch Arthur, apart from the oat cakes. Over here, we have two Scottish cheeses. This is the Loch Arthur cheese, this one. And then this is the Cairnsmore's cow's milk cheese. And then I have some oat cakes from Tesco, which unfortunately aren't looking too healthy. And we have here the Loch Arthur chutney. So this is squash, apple and beetroot. It's quite interesting. And then we have the focaccia. Unfortunately, there was a rat in the van earlier who ate some of the focaccia. <laughs> Just joking, that was me. I was quite hungry earlier and had some of that for my lunch. I had a bottle of wine in the cupboard but I brought it into the house when I was at home and also all the whiskies I brought into the house because I was sharing them with some people. So I don't have any drinks so I'm thinking to drink the bottle of beer that I bought for the Christmas present. I'm sure it will be fine but it won't be very cold that's the only thing so I'll think about whether I'll drink it. Oh, it's starting to get quite dark out there. As I've mentioned many, many times already, I'm going to France very soon, very soon actually. Uh, I'm just trying to think, it's probably in two weeks time from this video. And I'm very excited about the cheese in France. Oh, that smoky cheese is good. That's the Cairns more. Let's try the Loch Arthur one. Oh, it's very good. If you like cheddar, that's a good one to go for. That's quite smoky, the Cairns more one, but the Loch Arthur one. That's a mature cheddar that I got. A little bit strong. I really enjoyed the Loch Arthur farm shop. I'm definitely going to go back there again. Mmm, that chutney is really good. Squash, apple and beetroot. I really enjoyed my dinner and there's a long evening ahead of me of darkness. When I bought this van, my mum gave me this notebook to write down every night that I stay in the van so that I can calculate how many nights I actually spent. And to be honest, I haven't written down any. So what I'm doing is I'm going through all my photos on my phone. Usually when I stay somewhere, I take a picture of where I stay and they're all marked with a date. So I'm going to write down how many nights I stayed in the van 
and then I'll let you guys know. I got the van on the 17th of April this year and my first night in the van was Monday the 8th of May when I went to Shetland. So between the 8th of May and the 21st of December, I've spent 85 nights in the van. That's quite a lot, it's more than I expected. So what happens is I go on a trip and then there's lots of nights all together. So there'll be like 20 nights in a row and then I go home or 30 nights in a row and then I go home and then I have a break for a month when I organize all the editing and everything like that and then I go away on another trip. So they're all big blocks of different trips but those are the ones that I can remember. There might be a few other random nights that I went away that I've forgotten about but going through my photos I think that's almost accurate. I think this will be my last night in the van this year so it's uh, yeah I've made great use of the van I think. It's been worth having. I wonder if I calculate the price of the van. So I paid 6,600 for the van. Obviously there's the insurance, the road tax, the MOT and extra maintenance. But if I divide that by 85, that works out at 77 pounds 64 per night. And that's obviously the transport as well. Um, but that's been good and it's only been about half the year. So if I use it for the whole of next year as well, I'll get even better value quite happy with that. This is a good idea to write the notes. I'm going to be more organised and actually write them when I stay at places moving forward. <laughs> actually someone commented a little while ago in one of my videos and recommended me to try picking nettle and making nettle pesto. So I saw the nettle tea and I thought I'd give it a go and it's actually quite nice. I'm going to go outside and see how dark it is. Oh my gosh it's so dark. The winter solstice is an astronomical event that occurs annually when the Earth's axial tilt is farthest from the sun, resulting in the shortest day and the longest night of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. It usually takes place around December 21st or 22nd. Cultures around the world have historically marked the winter solstice with various celebrations and rituals. These celebrations are often tied to the recognition of the return of longer days. Examples include festivals, feasts and gatherings. Having the heater is honestly so life-changing. It is the best investment I've ever made. It turns the van into a really lovely cosy cottage. It's amazing. I'm sorry, there's nothing really to show you outside. I'm going to get back in the van, probably go to sleep and then tomorrow I'm going to wake up early and head to a very special place because actually for winter solstice there's a special place that people used to go a long time ago and these days some people still go to these places so I found a very interesting location quite close to Dumfries so I'm planning to go there in the morning to see the sunrise or if there's no sunrise because of the weather at least at sunrise time okay time to go in <gasps> Good morning, it's now around 7.30am and it's still so dark out there. It's raining a little bit but I'm going to head to the Twelve Apostle stone circles near Dumfries and see if there's anything going on there for the winter solstice. The weather isn't great so I can't imagine that many people would go out but it'll be interesting to go and see and if there is a sunrise there that would be nice to see but there probably won't be in this weather. <laughs> Let's get going. I've arrived here at the stone circle and it looks like it's quite light outside but I think it's the camera. It's currently 11 minutes past 8 and the sunrise is at 8.38. So we still have around 30 minutes until the sunrise but there is a little bit of daylight coming through. It's quite funny because I'm from this area and I didn't even know that this place was here. So the Ring of Brodgar is the biggest in Scotland. I don't think this is going to be as impressive as the Ring of Brodgar. The stones are actually bigger than I expected and it's really large. I'm going to head into the middle of the stone circle now. It's almost 8.38, the official time of the sunrise. I wonder if anything special is going to happen. There was another lady here actually and she just wandered around and then she left. So she hasn't stayed until the sunrise. Stone circles are ancient megalithic structures found in various parts of the world and many can be found in Scotland. Some of these stone circles are aligned with astronomical events and during the winter solstice the rising or setting sun may align with certain stones or markers within the circle. Some believe that ancient cultures conducted ceremonies or rituals during significant astronomical events 
like the winter solstice. Stone circles may have served as gathering places for communities during the winter solstice. People might have come together to mark the occasion, share food and participate in communal activities or rituals. The Twelve Apostles Stone Circle has 11 stones and measures 86 metres in diameter, making it the largest in mainland Scotland. It's thought that when the circle was first built that it may have had as many as 18 stones in it. The site is believed to be at least 4,500 years old and dates from the Neolithic period. The name Twelve Apostles comes from the 19th century when the circle had 12 stones and the farmer destroyed one to be used as building material. Some locals describe this as like Jesus losing one of his 12 disciples. For those of you who were interested in the daylight hours in Scotland, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye!